Hi, I'm Seth Freuberg. I'm the Director of Options Training here at SMBU in Manhattan. I'm also SMB's Options Trading Desk Manager. Uh, I'd like to talk about um, backtesting today. Backtesting's a really good idea. Uh, it is important for you to build the muscle memory on strategies that uh, other people have developed. It's also important to uh, come up with your own ideas and then backtest those and see if there are any flaws in them or not. So it's a great practice. I, I'm a fanatical backtester myself. Uh, but what I want to talk to you about today are the limitations of backtesting, or at least to put backtesting in its proper context. So in science, there's a concept called necessary but not sufficient. And, and, and what that means is that um, there are certain things that are necessary, but it, they're not sufficient to prove something one way or another. Uh, a simple example is a human life. A human life uh, air is necessary for human life, but is it sufficient? No, it's not sufficient because you also need water and you need food and you need heat and you need shelter and all that stuff. So uh, air is necessary, but it's not sufficient. So uh, similarly, backtesting is absolutely necessary for getting, uh, developing a strategy and becoming confident in that strategy, but it's not sufficient to determine whether that strategy is going to uh, work or not. And um, let, me tell you, let me tell you why. First off, let's get some things clear. If a strategy fails in backtesting, it's not going to work live. It's not like it's suddenly going to repair itself because of live trading. It's almost definitely going to be worse, actually. So uh, the back, a strategy being providing a successful return uh, in a backtest is necessary, but it's not sufficient. And the reason it's not sufficient is because you haven't live traded it yet. And I would say um, a good 50% of strategies that seem great in a back test end up failing in live trading, which basically proves the point that it's necessary but not sufficient. So why do things that look great in a back test fail in live trading? And, and, and I think it's important to focus on that. There are a lot of reasons why. Uh, and this isn't intended to be an exhaustive list, but it's certainly intended to be an important list. First off, uh, when you're backtesting, you're using software. And that software is most likely set to mid prices. Uh, when you're tr trading live, um, you can get mid prices sometimes. Sometimes you can get better than mid prices. But more often than not, you're probably going to pay a little bit more than the mid price. And so, uh, that's fine if you do that once, but if you, uh, if you trade a strategy for a whole year, um, the fact that there's a difference between the mid price that you saw in your back test and the actual price that you ended up paying or, or, or selling something for, um, uh, the fact that those are going to be different is going to create possibly a meaningful difference in your return. So that's a, that's a really big point. You can't always get the mid price. Uh, even though theoretically you should be able to. Um, the second thing, which I wouldn't underestimate, uh, is that your testing software data may not be completely accurate. You know, lots of data issues uh, come into uh, certain, uh, you know, software. And, um, you know, you never know when you're looking at a bad price necessarily. Sometimes it's, it's obvious you're looking at a bad price, but other times it may be more subtle. So that can throw off uh, the validity of a back test. A third issue is that uh, sometimes you're going to get a distortion in the market where, uh, and we've talked about this in the past, where a particular retail trader may be coming in and buying a small lot of something or making an offer for a small lot of something that's throwing off the price of that option or that complex order. Uh, in that case, then, you can't really rely on the price uh, uh, that you're seeing on the screen in your back test. Uh, a good way to kind of test this if the price looks way off is to go to the synthetic equivalent of it. So if you're buying a, uh, a put condor, um, you may want to check a call condor if the price doesn't look right in a back test just to try to minimize the effect of this issue. Uh, so uh, I guess another way to phrase this point is sometimes um, the price you're seeing is just synthetically wrong uh, it's being thrown off by an abnormality in the market, and um, you, you know, as you get more experience, you'll pick these things up. 
but it's another reason that a back test may not uh, you know, be completely uh, in sync with live trading. Um, here's another point that a lot of people forget. In many cases, um, you're not going to have just one strategy on. You may have four or five strategies. I know some people that trade 10 strategies at the same time. I don't particularly advise it, but that's what they do. Well, if you're going through a back test and you're very, very calmly uh, making your adjustments, um, that's fine, except if you're not making your adjustments in live trading because you're dealing with some other trade you have on. You're not back testing four strategies at the same time. You're back testing one strategy. But when you're live trading, you're trading multiple strategies. You may not be paying attention to the particular strategy that you're trading live uh, in the same way that you were paying attention to it as a back tester. So um, even though you have every intention of following your rules, you may not physically be able to because you have multiple strategies on. Uh, that's an important one and a lot of people uh, miss that. Uh, and finally, yet most importantly, is emotion. Do you have the emotional strength to follow your plan? You may have the best plan in the world, but if you don't follow it, uh, you're going to lose. And so are you, in fact, going to follow your plan in live trading? Now that you can do, you could write a book on just that one topic. But I would say this, the riskier your uh, back-tested strategy is at certain points in the trade, the less likely you, you are to follow it in live trading. It's so easy to uh, flip to the next day in a back test uh, when you're in an extreme situation on a trade, uh, it's a, a heck of a lot harder to go in overnight and not hedge that uh, when you're in that same uh, situation. So um, your emotions are probably the major reason that a back-tested strategy doesn't work. It's because you're not really trading the strategy you back-tested because of your emotions. So in conclusion, um, how do you know if a strategy that works out great from a backtesting standpoint is actually uh, going to work in live trading. There's only one way to find out. You got to live trade it. So let's talk about the smart ways to live trade uh, a new strategy. The smart way is to trade it on small capital. Uh, that way, if you, have, if you find a flaw in live trading that just isn't there in the backtest that you would not have picked up uh, on in the backtest, uh, then you, uh, you won't lose too much money in the process and then it will be a cheap lesson that that strategy does not work. Now one way to trade on small levels of capital is to use a smaller vehicle that mimics the vehicle you are trading. So example, if you develop a strategy in the SPX, you probably want to live test it for the first time in the SPY options. Why? Because the SPY options are one-tenth the value on average uh, than the SPX options, and therefore you have one-tenth the capital involved in, in the trade. So if you lose, you will lose one-tenth of what you traded. If you make money, uh, you actually um, you know, won't make as much proportionally you, as you would have if you had uh, traded in the larger vehicle such as the SPX because of the commission ratio, the ratio of commissions to the amount of capital you're using. But I wouldn't worry about that. Um, what I would worry about is uh, whether the strategy essentially works when live traded. Uh, now, another issue is if you do use the ETF SPY instead of SPX, um, there may be a difference in execution once you move to the SPX. So you probably need to make the move up to that index uh, or, 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 the, or the other underlying that you're, that you're mimicking with the ETF you may need to go uh, into the larger vehicle to conclusively prove that your strategy works. If you do that, trade it on the absolutely minimal level of capital that you possibly can uh, with that strategy. So um, again, uh, if you don't live test something, you do not know if it's going to work. Trust me, uh, anyone who has traded these strategies uh, for any length of time will tell you the same thing. You do not know whether it's going to work as a result of the back test. The back test may be a strong sign. Hey, this is, this is looking good. Uh, but that's all you know at that point. All you know is it's looking good. Uh, whether it survives the live test, that's the, that's the acid test. 
So back testing is necessary, absolutely necessary, but not sufficient. So live test is how you determine the sufficiency of a strategy. So thanks very much and we'll see you next week.